NBA All-Star voting starts in one hour. That means the Bowl Bowl to starting lineup has to happen, right? Run it back. Starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. It is Tuesday, the Tuesday before the cold that takes over the entire nation. Sean Sharania, Stadium Insider. Chandler P got the all-black memo. And then, of course, Eddie G on the end just doing his own thing like he always does. (laughs) What the heck, Eddie? I didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo in our photo shoot either. Everybody had a black shirt on. I had black pants, so I tried to make it work. We just want to be slimmed out. That's all it is. We're very vain people. Um, We had some Uh, games last night. We (laughs) there. We finally agree. We had some good games. Could it be maybe finals? I don't know. But this is a Giannis forty-two point ten rebound night. Bucks beat the Pelicans. It was a lot of anticipation for the Giannis, the Zion. What's going on in those four games? uh, Thirty-eight points a game, twelve rebounds. Brook Lopez also just throwing in thirty points. That's his season high. Look, this Pelicans team has been super fun to watch, uh, opening a lot of eyes. Shams, if you had to put a, a finger on it, what would be their biggest concern at the moment? I think right now is it's the health of Brandon Ingram. He's missed the last about a month with a sprained toe. And I'm, I'm told the hope is that he's back at some point soon, but there's still not that clarity as far as when that point will be. And I think for him in Zion Williamson, it was so important this season to get a level of chemistry because the last two seasons, Brandon Ingram, a couple of years ago, um, uh, you know, him and Zion Williamson played extensively. Zion Williamson emerged. Um, you know, as an all-star, Brandon Ingram had emerged as an all-star as well in New Orleans. But last year, B.I. really carried this team and carried the loads. I Williamson did not play a single game. And so these these two guys coming back, I don't think there's a clash in terms of how they play. But I know there was an importance on the season, on this roster, to get both of those guys chemistry. Unfortunately, injuries for for whether it's for Brand, for Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, these guys have not been getting that level of chemistry. So if there is a level of concern, it's that. But this team overall has had a successful start to the year and i think right now they're in a in kind of a tough uh place they've they, they've lost a couple road games here they lost at home against a good milwaukee team so just hopefully getting uh brandon Ingram back on the court here soon yeah this this was a huge statement game for me for milwaukee without <laughs> chris middleton on the road uh, the way they guarded Zion was so impressive. They really just shrunk the floor. Uh, they have length, they have size with Giannis and Brooke Lopez, both defensively. Uh, it was impressive. And this was supposed to be the, uh, the Zion Giannis uh, crazy matchup here. And, and Giannis played really well, but yeah, the centers really battled for me. It was Brooke Lopez 30 of 12 to 17 knocking down four threes and then Valanchunas also 37 18 and five like crazy games for the centers it just kind of shows how deep you know both teams are and the seasons that they're both having yeah I think it's a statement game for both teams in a weird way they they, they both showed up for the competition and and for you know to prove they're with the best team in the league I'm impressed by the Bucks and their defense I think they're the best defensive team in the NBA and I think Brooke Lopez, who Chandler mentioned, is a big reason why, if not the biggest reason why. And that, that's why people like J.J. Redick are saying maybe he's an all-star this year. 30 points is great, but the way he shrinks the floor, like Chandler mentioned, the way he absolutely takes away the paint on defense, it changes everything for the Bucks. And so they can win a big game like this without Chris Middleton and 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 able to contain a player like Zion, who nobody has been able to contain basically in his entire <laughs> career and the way they have by taking that paint away. But then with Brooke able to also close out on shooters afterwards, it completely changes what that defense is. It, it's helped. It's helped Giannis win two defensive player of the year awards. And I think it should get Brooke one if he continues this for the rest of the season. That just warms my heart, having been there for his rookie season in in New Jersey at the time. That just makes me very happy. Um, But look, it can't be all positives, right? We have to find some sort of a flaw. Something has to be wrong with this Bucs team. If you had to pick a weakness, uh, Chandler, why don't you start? What would you say it was? I mean, it's the health of Chris Middleton. I think he's, you know, he's their best second option scoring, you know, shooting wing. And, and he's kind of been in and out of the lineup all year long. And Giannis needs someone like him as great as Giannis is. He needs someone to relieve that pressure, to go get a bucket, to knock down shots. And Lopez has been great. Drew holiday's great. He's also been in and out of the lineup, but 
to me, Chris Middleton, he's, he's an all-star and he can do it all. And him being in and out of the lineup is putting pressure on these other guys to kind of fill that void and putting a lot of pressure on Giannis to carry even more load than he always, than he already does. So to me, I think that's, that's the biggest thing because this team fully healthy, they're, they're tough to beat. <laughs> Middleton's role to me, of course, is vital. Like what Chandler said, if there's no Middleton, then you can say goodbye to any move that they want to make. But, it, you know, hopefully Chris Middleton's going to stay healthy. And I think the one thing that they know that they need, um, and I feel like they need, is is really that 4-3 that they had a couple years ago with P.J. Tucker. That's why we've seen them aggressively trying to go get a Jay Crowder in that lineup. They miss that guy coming off the bench. They, they have Bobby Portis at the five, but they want that that other guy in the front court, they can come off the bench and we'll see if they can get the Jay Crowder deal done. But that's something that they haven't been able to replace ever since they lost PJ Tucker to Miami. And then he goes from Miami to Philly. Yeah. We're going to remember that one. This, this Jay Crowder thing, just when, when is that going to get solved? Eddie, um, <laughs> pick a team, which team realistically would give this squad the, the biggest trouble. I think it's the Celtics, the team that beat them last year. And when, when they're fully healthy and hopefully the Bucks will be fully healthy, we'll get to see really, who is the best team in the Eastern Conference? I think it's clearly out of those two. Shout out to the Cavs, big win yesterday, but it, they're mm -hmm. in a different class. Um, so, yeah, I think it's them when they have Robert Williams and they're able to test what Giannis can do in a crowded paint. But, you know, the Celtics haven't looked so great in the last week or two. Uh, a lot of their shooters have have came down to earth, and, and it's <laughs> completely morphed with that defense. I mean, what that offense is now. So, yeah, I think it's the Celtics, but I, I, I think the Bucks are the clear-cut best team in the league right now. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's definitely Boston, um, Cleveland, Philly, Brooklyn, I think can compete with them, but I don't, I don't see them beating them four times. Uh, so yeah, I agree with that. I think it's just Boston and Milwaukee are the clear cut favorites. And honestly, I think whoever wins the East wins the West, in my opinion. Is, is that a, you want to lock that one down this early? No, I don't want to go that far. Get it out yet. there. Just throw it out there. Get hot out there. takes. Let's do it. I, although maybe it's not that hot to take. Maybe it's legit. Um, let's go West, shall we? Because Oklahoma City, I mean, they didn't get the memo. They're not tanking, apparently. They beat Portland. An SGA game winner. Also, a little history was made with Dame passing Clyde Drexler as the Trailblazers all-time leading scorer. Love to see it. Uh, Shams, I love doing some psychoanalysis. So after the game, Dame had advice for SGA, and he said that the grass isn't always greener. <laughs> Here we go. What do you think he meant by that? <laughs> well, I, I think, first of all, uh, shout out to Damian Lillard for passing uh, Clyde Drexler and, and for OKC's part. You know, they, early on this year, you know, guys were missing games. SGA, I believe, came off the bench to start a second half. So I think, you know, efforts were made to, uh, you know, to, 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 to do what that team had to do. You know, you know, t teams are trying to position themselves. But this team is competing at a really high level, and you have to give SGA a lot of credit. And I think when you look at Damian Lillard's comments, are, it, it's, it's very interesting, the fact that he made those comments after the game. Mm -hmm. SGA is just so good. I, I think being an all-star – is going to be something that for sure we're going to talk about with him this season. To me, he, he's looking like a shoe in uh, really a no brainer. Um, and he appears to really want to be in Oklahoma city and really embracing the role that he has there. And the thunder right now want to build around him. So as much as I think teams around the league want to continue to eye that situation, whether it's Toronto or New York or LA, uh, everything seems to be right there. You know, Damian Lillard's comments being kind of uh, an overshadow uh, or foreshadow of what the conversation, uh, you know, is to come with SGA there. Uh, I love that he threw that out into the, into the universe. Although sometimes technically the grass is greener on the other side. I mean, you, you can't, right? Like you can't say that it always isn't. Yeah, it depends on the grass. Sometimes it's bad. But look, the, the kid went 14 for 14 from the line. He had the, the game winner. I mean, you really... Cannot ask for a better performance. As far as a clutch player goes, though, Chandler, I ask you this. Can we put him in the conversation right now as a clutch player in this league? I mean, you can. The, the, the season he's having is unbelievable. And look at the Thunder. They're two games out of the play-in with what feels like <laughs> an AAU roster that we're watching out there. And this is without their big stud, Chet Holmgren. So SGA has right. been just carrying the load. The guy's averaging 31, 6, and 5. He's probably going to be a starter in the All-Star game. Like, he has really taken his game to, to the next level. He's I think the dead on favorite for most improved. He should be an all-star. I don't care about their record. This kid has taken leaps and bounds and is to me, the most impressive player this season so far. 
I, I love it. I mean, shout out to our stat guy yesterday who figured out that they have an awful record when he scores 30 and then he goes out there and wins <laughs> or scoring 30, hits a game winner. It warms my heart to see a young fella shoot a mid-range jumper for a game winner. He said afterwards, this shot he's worked on, the spin right into that jumper. Uh, I'm so happy it wasn't a sidestep Tyrese Halliburton three. Uh, but yeah, he's an all-star. They need to build around him. This is the type of player you hoard assets for. This is the entire point of being that type of franchise. They, this is the jewel of the Paul George trade. I think you could honestly hmm. say you've won the trade now. He's probably a better player than Paul George right now. And this was the point. This is the entire point of breaking it down was to get him and to get picks. And now you have Chet Holmgren and you have whatever you have going forward with your picks. And you have basically the entire decade of, of Clippers picks. This is the entire <laughs> point. And I'm happy that he's showing that. I'm happy he's an all sure all-star, whether he starts, whether the coaches put him in. He deserves it. And I I'm happy for him. As far as Dame goes, yo, it sounds great. And yes, he remained loyal to the Blazers. But we're talking about a guy who has toyed with leaving that team multiple times, very publicly as well. Like th it wasn't just rumors and innuendo. It's Dame Lillard on the record saying, yo, I sat down with LeBron and Anthony Davis and essentially Ooh. tampered. So find whoever yeah. you need to find. But yeah, I thought about it. So, all right, Dame, like, yeah, maybe the grass is greener because you thought it was for sure. Yeah, Chandler. Yeah, <laughs> listen, I, I think I think it's great when players stay with one franchise for their whole career, when they show loyalty. But uh, yeah, things happen. You're you definitely took meetings. You definitely your agent had conversations like Bradley Beal. He honestly just stayed in Washington because he got that fifth year and got more money. So as much as you want I'll to talk it. about loyalty and, <laughs> and that, that is part of it. But if SJ, if, if SGA has a chance to move to a bigger market, to sign a huge deal with get more money off the court, no doubt in my mind, it's exactly what this dude is going to do. And that's what most people should do, honestly. But I do respect the guys who stay in the same market and, and it works out like Dame has done. But th this kid's an absolute star and I, and I don't see him staying there for the rest of his career. I do appreciate him wanting someone else to sort of take that track. And, and by the way, working out, I guess that's all relative. Like, what does that mean to everyone? But I, I'm giving you the option right now, Chandler. Nothing else involved. SGA or Dame. Who are you taking? Hmm. Oh, like not giving me no age factored in or anything? Well, I mean, who they are right now. Oh, yeah, time machine, I don't I'm, know I'm, take, I'm taking Dame Lillard right now. If I'm for the future, okay. obviously I'm going young, but right, Dame Lillard, you can't sleep on him. So he is one of the greats and he is unbelievable. But obviously for the future with their ages, I'm going SGA. But right now I need someone to win a game. I'm going Dame Lillard. I can't read Eddie's face. I'm going Shay. If we're talking right now, this season, and you know, we're talking about injuries and, and mm. what he gives you with the youth and his ability to shoot now, which is something he's added as his career has, has kind of gone on. I'm going Shay. I got Shay over a lot of guys. I'm probably picking him over Trey. I like it's oh yeah, he's that good to me. So I, I think you know, we're talking about him and Ja. That's kind of the tier of player that I see him in. So yeah, give me give me SGA. Shay and Jaw. It's like a 90s R&B group. I just, I love it. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> how about, look at this. The Sixers on a nice little run here. Beat the Raptors in overtime. That's their fifth straight. Uh, MB with 28. Tobias, 21. Also had a big-ass three in uh, overtime to pull ahead for good. Not sure where that came from. Chandler, uh, are you... I mean, look, this team has been sort of quietly under the radar for good reason for most of us for the season. But right now, are you buying a little more stock in Philly? Yeah, I am. Listen, when they're healthy as well, they're a great team and they have one of the best big threes in the league and, and they're still missing Maxi. But this is this game was interesting because these are two teams that are trending in the opposite direction. When you got Philly, that's kind of on a roll right now. And then you got Toronto, who is, you know, lost six straight. And Toronto is, is confusing. We'll get to them. But yeah, Philly, Philly is going to be a tough to beat because they can do it all. They have James Harden, who's now this facilitator who can go get a bucket. They have Tobias Harris. They have depth that that time period where they had all the guys out, these shake Milton's, these guys really stepped up their game and kind of took on that challenge. They have Joel when he's on, he's the most dominating big guy. And Tyrese Maxey is one of the best young players in the league that can get out in transition. He's so quick. He can go get a bucket. So I love Philly. I think they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. I think they have experience. They have youth. They have size. Uh, when they're healthy, they're going to be extremely hard to beat. 
Yeah, look, I yeah. usually hate this team, and this was a god awful game to watch. But I do appreciate how they gutted this win out. Overtime was five to two, like you know, so they had to strap up, they had to defend, and they had to really make it work. Ooh. And when it all came down to it, they, they didn't go to ISO ball. They they found Tobias Harris for a big shot. He actually hit two big shots. One was called back yeah, yeah. for an offensive foul. Um, so. It, it was it, it was actually an impressive win for a Toronto team that is not as bad as their record is. And they went down the stretch playing small with Chris Boucher and, and OG and Pascal Siakam. And the, the, the Sixers were able to contain them and really bother them on defense in a way that I'm not used to seeing a team with James Harden and Tobias Harris on the floor do. It, it made me wonder with all the talk about if Tobias should be traded. And he's been in trade rumors basically his entire career. Maybe this is a guy they need to hold on to. Maybe this is that <laughs> that third or fourth guy they need. I I don't know what the Shams intel is here, but I get that he is the easiest to trade piece and easiest to turn into you know two players, three players. But he, I mean, he bailed him out in a big way yesterday and was key for them. The Shams, thing about Tobias Harris that makes it so yeah, I mean the the thing that makes it so interesting with Tobias Harris is that uh, you know Philly, like I I reported whether well, it was a month ago ish, like they discussed. Tobias Harris and different deals. And I think the, the challenge though, is making the team better. They, you can discuss trading a, a player and w- there was a lot of conversation around Eric Gordon and Tobias Harris. And then Philadelphia pivoted and went and got DeAnthony Melton last year during the draft. So you'd rather have T- Tobias Harris and DeAnthony Melton than just having Eric Gordon. So trying to find creative ways to make the team better. So you have to look at potential Tobias Harris deals just because to make the money work. Um, so if, if it makes a team better, I think you look at it. But most deals are not going to make you better uh, with a Tobias Harris. By the way, Tobias want- Harris is averaging 17, 6, and 3 on 50% from the field and 42 from 3. Like, like every he's good. Team, yeah, every team needs guys like Tobias every. Harris to kind of relieve that pressure. Okay, I want to get to Tyrese Maxey really quickly, but I want to talk about this trade rumors thing, right? And this is really more towards Shams and Eddie because we're just mere civilians. But do you think that your skin (laughs) is thick enough to hear about trade rumors almost your entire career and then still go out there and give it your best every night? Or would you sulk? Eddie, go. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I would sulk. I'd be so upset. Just the, just the anxiety of like tomorrow, I might have to live in Cleveland. That sucks. <laughs> and it would bother me on a daily basis. So no, there's no way. I mean, I don't know what the rural world sense is, but like I used to work at a warehouse for a grocery store and it's like, yo, if I have to work at the warehouse now across town and my commute is different, my life would be in shambles. So there's no way. There's no way. Right? Like if I even heard a coworker say something negative about me in passing, I feel like it would <laughs> I'd shut it down. I'd shut it down, Chandler. Like I'm out. Picture <laughs> having a choice and the best money that you got was in Memphis, Tennessee, and you had to personally choose that. That's what it's like. <laughs> All these cities in the world, but the best offer I got was in not the best place. And you just have to take it and pack Do up it. your family and get movers. It's a, it's a, it's a stressful, but exciting time. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I'd be Before spamming the agents. So Miami didn't offer anything. Nothing. Not Miami, I'll take not a cut. LA? Are you sure? <laughs> like I, Shams is the most equipped, I think, to deal. He, you just seem the most wise and level-headed of the four of us. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, I'm not paying attention. Listen, I'll get it. You know, Eddie will send me some stuff. People will send me stuff. But I, I stay focused on the work. You know, it's crazy. When I was growing up, I'd read cliches. Like, I'd see players like Chandler come on TV and say, I take it one day at a time. Like, I'm only focused on the next game. And I'd be like, what is this guy talking about? And then, you know, you start, like, actually working. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. You start working. You're like, yeah, that's actually what life is. So, I, it's not yeah, really I know. a cliche. I- I see you, Shams, and whatever Riz God is, you're all over the place. I get it. You're level headed. <laughs> I totally get it. You're better than Bob us. <laughs> okay, we got to get to the Mavericks. The Mavericks, um, well, they were active. That's a great way to start this one, isn't it? Luca and Jason Kidd, very, very active in this one. Both ejected, uh, arguing a no call against the Timberwolves. Um, they lost. They're now under 500. And Luca, uh, well, you know, not surprising here, Chandler. Do you agree with the ejection, though? Yeah, it's hard to tell what he said, but obviously it's just it's a second tech and, and he complains an awful lot, man. It looked like this game was already getting out of reach and, and they get another shot at him. But yeah, th- this is kind of his his kryptonite and his Achilles heel where everything and even I've been to a, a, a couple of his games this year. Even when he's dead wrong, he's he's complaining a lot and he's getting this reputation that, you know, 
uh, he's not getting any calls and they're out to get him. And, and it's, it's every single time asking the coaching staff to review. So this is definitely, I think something that will look to improve when, when the older he gets, the more mature he gets. But mm. as a star player, I, I personally think he's got to be a little bit better. He's got to be more mature. He's, he can't do things like this and take himself out of games. Yeah, the maturity is the right word. As weird as it sounds for an adult man, but I, I've yeah. been watching basketball for I don't know how many years. I don't think I've ever seen a player complain as often as he he has. And I've watched the entire LeBron career. I watched Rasheed Wallace get forty whatever text. I don't think I've ever seen. I'm talking. This guy is mid layup, looking at the ref, screaming, "Where is my foul?" Before he even takes. <laughs> He's like, these are the stupid things I care about on the court. And he's weirdly impressive in that sense. I'm actually shocked he doesn't get ejected more. Also, that's not huh. a foul. That, if anything, it's an offensive foul. What are you doing? I hate that play. I hate like pump fake, <laughs> the guy jumps, I spin under you and try to get a foul. So yeah, look, <laughs> take the L, bro. Like I, I, I appreciate Jason Kidd standing up for him. Jason Kidd was quite the, the, the ref worker in his time as well. Uh, but yeah, like I'm shocked Luca isn't ejected more. He is it in it, it's like an art form what he does. So uh, wow. it, I, I don't know that it changes. This might just be who he is. LeBron is still complaining to the refs all these years later and laying on the floor and rolling around. So Luca might just be doing this for 20 years. I don't know. I call that a 2K foul. Like you never get that call. If you're going and running at like LA Fitness or Lifetime Fitness or wherever you get your basketball in, you're never getting that like pump fake and like <laughs> jump into the defender call. You never get that because it's a 2K call. So hey, you, sh- shout we, out. You know they they still call it. Shams, if 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 we were at the gym, I wouldn't even attempt that. Whatever that is, that's not <sighs> like basketball. I would pass it or something. So like, don't do that. Chandler's man, definitely gotten away with a few of those in his career. Well, you know though, what it so. is now, and now people, the kids initiate contact, and then they're con- looking at the ref, confused that they didn't call the foul. And I'm with Eddie. Half the time they do this, it's an offensive foul. Like when you shot fake and the guy blows by you, and I jump this way, that's not my natural shot. And then I get confused and I look at the ref as if that's a foul. <laughs> but you, you created all this. So I, it doesn't make sense to me, and and it's too much. Well, let me. Uh, do we really think it's going to change? Because isn't this the same guy that we've had a couple seasons now, where it came down to the last few games on whether or not he got another technical and would have to sit? Like this is, this is a lot, and I feel like we're not really seeing a change in the right direction, are we? Well, on the flip side, you could say this kid's so competitive. He wants to win. He cares, but it's, it's got to change. And this has got to come from the top. This has got to come from Nico. This has got to come from Mark. This has got to call come from Dirk. Someone's got to kind of get a mm-hmm. hold of him and be like, listen, man, you do so much positive. You're great. We don't need to tell you this, but you don't, don't let this take you out of your game and damn sure don't get kicked out of the game because our team stinks without you and we need you on the floor at all costs. So th- this it's got to change, but uh, I like how much he cares. <laughs> I like how competitive he is, but it's just, it's not like, like this isn't this isn't a good look. Oh, it's very it's just so much acting and drama. All right. But he's not the only one that has um, something to say about the officiating. This goes back to Sunday and Jalen Brown and his words. We turned the ball over. We had a lot of travels. That's something I got to work on, I guess. They they pick and choose where they emphasize the traveling call. But it seemed like every game, like that's the person I'm targeting. But you look around the league, you know, you could pinpoint a lot of players is doing the same thing. Um, so you can't pick and choose when you want to call stuff. But it's something I'm going to work on. Shams, do we have any league analysis right now on these travel calls? Because there are a lot. So I, I think there's been some, you know, obviously questions around the, you know, audience and fans as far as why has traveling increased so much. And so what I was told is that in late October, a memo went out that they would be taking a closer look at travels. And so since that point in late November, we've seen travel calls from the league's data on a recent competition committee call. Uh, travels have doubled uh, since that late October memo and since that since that late October moment. And so it's it's clear that um, you know traveling is being emphasized, is being called more often, um, and I think the refs themselves they're working on trying to find consistency. And I know that you know that's the biggest thing for players, coaches, execs. It's like finding a level of consistency because you can't call a travel on every play. Jalen Brown I think tweeted last night 
like it, it's it's tough because he understands that some of these calls are travels. He's just a level of consistency and like, are you going to call every single play a travel, every single play a double? So that's the biggest thing that they got to work on. But yes, there has been data and it's it's pretty much doubled uh, since the point of emphasis. I mean, look, they're humans, right? So they're not going to get them all. Was it Bam out of bio the other night that had like 29 steps um, before he finished? It was, <laughs> it was a crazy one, but nothing nothing really happened. But for this one, Jalen is seemingly taking a little personally as if they're targeting him. So do you think that there's validity in that, Chandler? And have you ever felt like a ref was targeting you? No, not not targeting. Look, these refs, at the end of the day, you you have a relationship with these refs. You see them all the time. You get to know them. You like some. You you don't like some. But at the end of the day, these guys are they're they're trying their best. And it takes a while to to understand that, especially when you're competing and you disagree and you want to win. But you know, these guys, I wish there was accountability for them. I wish their mistakes were public like ours were. I wish there were certain <laughs> different rules that that could be made to kind of keep it an even playing field. Um, do I think that, you know, Tony Brothers wakes up and thinks I'm gonna go screw with Jalen Brown tonight? No chance. <laughs> he's, he's got a family to provide for. He's got a job to do. He's not going to try and do it bad. Although he might not stand James Harden or any of these players. He could have a, something with them. He's not going to go out there on national TV and purposely in my eyes, blow the game, ruin his career, ruin his job. Do does it get extremely annoying sometimes? And you do think yeah. they're out to get you and you can't get a call and they miss three in a row. Yeah, for sure. But this, again, this is a maturity thing that he's just going to have to get past and they're not out to get you. And over the, over the course of a season, it's good. There's going to be ups and downs and it's going to change. And it's, it's, it's all going to come back and, and even out. But no, the idea that these refs are, are personally attacking <laughs> the players I, I don't agree with the traveling is obnoxious and they've made a point now they've made it clear that they're calling them. But even last week on my story, I'm sitting there and I'm just recording a guy at half court. I forgot who it was. And he takes three little steps and then dribbles. And this is the game yeah. on the line. So like now they've put this onus on them to be consistent. And I think it sucks for the game. I think it's slowing down the game. Fans can't like it, but they have now set the standard so high that when they do blow a non-call at the end of the game, it's going to piss a lot of people off. Yeah. Eddie, you're a fan. How much do you hate this? I, I think it's an interesting part of the evolution of the game. And, and if you watch these travel calls, a lot of them are like, on the takeoff off the triple thread on the sidestep for the, for the jumper. It's not the traveling you would think of a guy driving to the rim like Giannis and really pushing the boundaries of what two steps in a gather is. So I think it's just younger players innovating the game more than ever before and, and finding ways to get spacing, get jumpers and the league having to catch up with that for Jalen Brown. A lot of it is taking off before he puts the ball on the ground and you're taking every advantage you can by getting your feet down and, and getting going and and the same thing with the jumpers. These these kids these days have learned how to find ways to get back behind that three point line with their two steps and and their footwork to get a three off the off the off their hands. And and it's it's tough to keep. I mean, I'm an old head in a lot of ways. So when I watch them sidestep and do layup gathers into threes, I'm still like, yo, that looked like three steps. Um, <laughs> I'm still that guy. And 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 I'm like, if I did that at the park, I'm getting called for that. And maybe not now because everybody knows what it is, but yep. it, it's just the evolution of the sport. It's trying to figure out how to officiate that and and for the players try to figure out how to make it work right. Um, I, I think it's, yo, it's frustrating as a fan right now to watch, but I think it'll be ironed out at some point and we'll have some balance. And, and those guys will have to adjust their pros. Jalen Brown knows he needs to not put his second foot down before he puts the ball down. You know what I mean? And so it, it, it's going to cost him a split second. Yes, but he can still get by defenders. He'll figure it awesome. out. Also, I will say it's a, it's a tough job, man. Like no matter what call they make, <laughs> there's 15 people on either side that are going to think you're wrong and it's hard in game speed. So it's a shitty job in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I wanting that job is crazy to me. No. It's too hard. Uh, taking a quick break right here. We're all going to get a glass of water, hydrate home alone is a Christmas movie. Duh. Tyrese Halliburton knows that. And Russ with the checkered flag when run it back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Run chip on my shoulder has never gone away. I've had a chip on my shoulder since I first started playing basketball. 
Uh, sheesh, I, I don't want to say it, but I remember my, my dad and uncle sat me down and said, hey, if you don't want to play basketball anymore, we understand. It's like, <laughs> dang, guys, are y'all, y'all, y'all even? <laughs> but uh, a lot of times people don't think they have, that you have that potential, that you have that growth, you have the opportunity, and then you go out there and prove them wrong. I've done it my entire life. I was a guy that was like a three-star, ended up going to Tennessee, I had success early, and ended up being player of the year twice. No one thought that was going to happen. You could ask anybody in high school, they wouldn't have told you that the case. And then I get drafted, and no one thought I was going to be playing in the pros more than a season. And that's kind of how I've been here for a longer. I've now taken a step to now I'm an impactful guy in the league. So it's how I approach every single day. It's like, if you keep doubting me, good for you. Good for you. Of course, that's Grant Williams sat down with Shams. Shams, he's he's obviously been gambling on himself for quite some time. Didn't take the extension that was previously offered. So right now, the market for Grant Williams looks like what? Uh, I, there's strong interest. So I, I think there's going to be a market. When you when I talk to teams around the league, I think people are looking at him as somewhere in that 15 to $17 million range in an extension. And so he's thriving right now in this hybrid role where he'll start sometimes, he'll come off the bench most of the time. So he's, he's able to really thrive as a spot up shooter. So it's going to be curious to see if he does end up leaving or if he gets a bigger deal somewhere else, obviously that will put him in a position to start, but where would that leave him? Uh, would he play better? And I think teams feel like he could be more impactful on the offensive end, uh, doing a little bit more than just being a spot up shooter. But right now he's filling a perfect role for them. He's thriving in that in that in that lineup, and and I think when you look at the cap space teams in the summer, the Orlando's, the OKC's, the Indiana's, those are all teams that you you can plug a Grant Williams and you can plug a Grant Williams on a team that's not competitive right now because he can probably help you with that with leadership and and obviously on the court as well. How exciting and nerve wracking for the guy, uh, Shams. Thank you. We will speak with you first thing tomorrow morning. But now, guys, get your fashionista hats on. It's fit or break. I have missed this. Where has it been? Uh, we're going to start things off with Jared Allen. Cozy vibes saw? at all times. This, I mean, look at us. If you catch, <laughs> if, if you catch me most days, I'm, I'm looking like this. So I'm not. I'm not going to hate. Oh. I'm not going to call it a fit, but I'm not going to call it a break. I There's no like chance I'm calling how, that a break. I like how much he genuinely does not care. <laughs> Like, he doesn't care to be cool. He doesn't care to look dope. He doesn't care about anything at all. He is, this is him through in and throughout. Yeah, I do respect that. Uh, also, I live in sweat, so there's no chance I'm saying anything negative about anything on that outfit. All right, Tyrese Halliburton. Um, the sneaker game, it's everywhere. This, of course, Kevin! A little Home Alone tribute. Uh, what are you guys thinking? I love it. I'm the classic, classic yes. movie. Those two guys used to terrify me as a kid. I love. <laughs> I, so so I hated them, but th these are these are fire. This is a classic movie. Everyone's got to watch this movie this time. Of year. Hold on, these two bumbling idiots scared you. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was a thing I had. They, I was terrified of these guys, kind of creeping through the window. Looking, I hated it. That's I can't awesome. hate on the wet bandits. There's no way. I'm sorry. <laughs> the yeah, sticky just... bandits. The sticky. <laughs> yeah, there's this no way. This is a fit for me. This is a fit. Yeah, I, I love, love them. God, I love when shoes are so pretty. They're pieces of art. Uh, Miles, okay, zero negative words coming out of anyone's mouth for Miles Turner. It's not the first time he's committed to any kind of Star Wars theme, but this is on another level. He brought an entourage with him? Like, this yes! is fire. Like, yeah. I hope he played well that night. I hope he like really earned the moment because this, is, great this is the type of stuff I would do. If, you know, if we were in the FanDuel offices every day, I'd have to do some entertaining stuff like this to keep it lively. <laughs> Call oh me a hater. Call me a hater. I hope he played awful, and I hope he had to put this back on and leave after the game. <laughs> leave after the game. Okay. Are you well, you I more. The I've walk never of shame. seen one Star Wars or Star Trek movie in my entire life. Fun fact. Yeah, you know, he brought he brought That's baby not Yoda fun, with him. Chandler. Like, there's just no there's not gonna be no hate for me. I he's the Mandalorian. My dog is named Mando. I just I'm sorry. I'm all for it. Good job. How bro. have you not seen a Star Wars? I don't know. It's just never been my thing. Chandler's but how too do cool. you know? It's fun. Oh no, no, no. Oh. Next time we're all in the same city, we're doing movie night, and it's gonna be a 12-hour oh. extravaganza. <laughs> And we'll start with the 70s, 80s versions, and then we'll go from there. Don't worry. I got you. I got uh, you. <laughs> uh, I okay. It. Russell Westbrook and little, it's like a NASCAR, but fashion vibe. I don't know. I mean, this is just, this, this is becoming the norm with him. 
And I shout out Russ. I think he's genuinely fashionable, but this is oh, not yeah. it. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I like the shades. I like the shades. I like what he do with the shades. But that's about it. Here. Yeah, it's I'm almost costumey. Like, I'm not rolling. I'm not rolling. No, this one. nobody likes that one. Okay, no one Just, likes that one. We hate it. Um, yeah. and then we've got a little Cam Johnson not really feeling bridges right. Oh. Wait, what's that guy? Doesn't want him, any of his sweat on his outfit. I don't. I don't hate that at all. Sweat's gross. No, that's that, the. Uh, I haven't gotten the bag yet. Chill out. Yeah, I gotta keep this in good in good condition. I also am always kind of shocked when guys dap guys up like right after the game. Like it's like a rapper front row and he's. He's giving oh, you know, Zion a big hug. Like that's gotta yeah. just I, I hate mm. guarding the guy in the gym who's like the over sweater. So I could not imagine. You mean the like, let it I, rain I'm, guy? Let it rain. Yeah, like yeah. stay yeah. away from me, bro. Teardrops. <laughs> yeah, if, if if Kevin ever comes to me after the game, it's just like a quick fist pump. I'm not I'm not giving the dap in the hug with the no, post game sweat. Draw the line. That's nasty, yeah. Chandler. That's nasty. It's not Did you good. do that? Did you hug people right after? No, you know what? I was the guy hurt in like a suit and was kind of like moving over every time <laughs> the guys got off. Not <laughs> shocked at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, nasty. It's not my I sweat. Feel, uh, I feel Cam Johnson's pain there because I've was i been I've been there. Went to Plus, he could you yeah. could have borrowed that jacket or maybe he had to return it after he wore it. I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> Who knows what his style is up to? Up next, uh, all-star voting kicks off. Oh my God, the year's flying by. And should felt Celtics fans, am I drunk? Hit the panic button when we come back. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> that is Jeremy Sohan. And that is a one-handed free throw because he's shooting about 45% from the free throw line. So had some talks with Pop, working on some fundamentals, decided to try this out. This was last night. Uh, Chandler, your feelings on this? I mean, it's a little concerning that, you, you know, you draft this guy and he's already kind of making this drastic of a change, but I respect it. This is, this is a kid who's, who's young enough to change. He's mature enough to understand that 45 or whatever percent is, is not going to cut it. Um, I, I don't know if the one handed, I mean, pretty much every jumper is one handed. You just have the guide hand, but I respect him trying. This just seems, it seems like it's a lot. Like when I call Rick Barry and hit him with the underhand, something like this, one hand is get a little touch with the left guide hand. I don't know. I, I respect the effort here and hopefully I think it's going to go up. It's hard to go down from 45%, but this, <laughs> is, fair. This, this, this is a drastic change for such a young kid. It looks like it's all his hand, right? I mean, if that's what he's concentrating on, I kind of respect that he's not afraid to, that's to do what, it publicly. That's, that's the best thing about it, I think, is that he's actually changing. And like Ben Simmons, DeAndre <laughs> Jordan, Dwight Howard, these guys never have even attempted at doing something like this because they're scared to you know, be embarrassed or miss or whatever it is. At least this kid has the guts to do it. Yeah, if he yeah. had the guts to do uh, neon green hair, this is this is a walk in the park for him, as long as he's making them, I guess. <laughs> so, yo, it, whatever works. We, we're watching yeah, the guy switch left-handed in the middle of this season. So, yeah, give it, give it a shot, bro. You guys, you guys are about to lose 65 games. It's cool. Just do whatever. Also, for everyone who's wondering why Pop's still doing this, look, loves it. This is just straight fundamentals. And I, it's all hand. It's, it's a hand. It's in the weird does place. Pop and the green hair. A, does Pop have a good jumper, Michelle? I, I don't know. I've never really seen him just sitting there and do that. <laughs> I'm going to assume yes, because it's Pop. The green hair, by the way, is because the coyote wanted it for Christmas. I mean, we've really got a familia thing going down here. La familia. Uh, let's move on to the All-Star yeah. game. So, look, last year, Andrew Wiggins was a starter. And it was because of this amazing takeover by K-pop fans and Twitter. And that's how that happened, which is fine. But I think the league is trying to figure out better ways to sort of get the all-star game in order. So they've made a couple changes. Um, I don't know if they're great big changes. The, the fans still count for 50 percent, but can't vote on Twitter anymore. You got to do it through the app. You can only do it one time a day. Of course, players and media also will have their say in this. It's a, it's big for the fan side of things. Uh, do we like it, Eddie? Do we think it will make a difference? No, I want the All Star Game to be as rigged as possible. Like I don't, <laughs> I want the dumbest fan. Ver when when Zaza almost made it, I wanted Oof. Zaza to make it. I'm I'm that guy. So, I mean, look, I guess they're making it a little more complicated to vote. I'm old enough to remember you used to have to be at a game and fill out a ballot and put it in a yeah, box. Yeah, right. So, 
<laughs> whatever works. But I mean, like, I, let us vote however we can. Let us vote on IG. <laughs> let us vote on on everything. Um, you know, I, Twitter's already been ruined. Let us do our votes there too. Wow, that's so defeatist. <laughs> So defeated. Yeah, I, I I agree though. I, first of all, all star voting it starts too early. This is okay. This is your chance to be an all star for playing good for two months. Like like this is where the voting. <laughs> the season is just starting. Like how I can the, you can be rewarded as an all star for basically having a two and a half months. Like SGA could not play the rest of the season, but he's an all star this year because he started yep. off hot. It's it's it, it doesn't really it doesn't feel right. Um, and I agree with Eddie. I think that we should get the most possible votes, like do it on Twitter, do it at games, do it on the app, have, have it all. Like, I think that's what makes it fun. Although it does. Like when I was in Houston, Jeremy Lin was damn near an all-star starter just because of all the Asian votes. So it was, it was, exactly. it's, 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 it's tough. I love it. I love that. But I, you know, how close do you want him to do it to all-star weekend? Like you want February 1st to be the the starting yeah i need a little more time i need a little more okay. time i need i need more games i need uh, it just feels too early now to to start it at least after yeah, I think christmas I, yeah i think it's a great point and and kind of I, I had never really considered but yeah we're voting on i know that look to, to be the shams role real quick i know technically <laughs> it's for like the last year of basketball but that's not how we think of it at all. We think of this season, mm -hmm. who's playing the best this season, who is the guy. And so, yeah, we are getting in off 25 games and it's not necessarily right. So I'm with Chandler, like start this MLK day when they have everybody play, like, let's do it then. Okay. I know there's probably some logistics of, you know, we got to print these jerseys. We got to get all these graphics ready. We got to work faster. It's fine. Just, just, just start it later. Let's do it better. <laughs> there you go. You heard it, America work faster and that's eddie g right there. <laughs> uh speaking of eddie you're still in the hot seat here because the nba finding uh -oh. the nets um uh, yeah i know they failed to comply with injury reporting rules that's basically meant they sat their starters against the pacers uh do you think any lessons were learned here uh no uh <laughs> to, to be frank uh, uh let me plug our show real quick on the latest episode etc is coming out today we yes. actually talked about this and Kevin basically said, Hey, look, this is the league. Like, I'm sorry to the fans. And I feel like most fans actually understand, but this is the league and we got to find days to rest. And it is what it is. If the Nets find another day where they'll have X amount of days off afterwards and they can combine it, they're, they're going to sit guys. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it does suck. And I know some people <laughs> in Indiana, like it's probably their one chance to see KD and Kyrie all year long. And, and that's unfortunate, but uh, I'll, I'll put the blame on Kevin because he's the one who said, yo, in today's NBA, you just got to pay a little bit more attention and planning out a game two months ahead of time. Probably not the best idea. Ooh. Yeah, this, uh, okay. is, this is, this is the era. This is the load management. This is a business and then teams are going to do what's best for their team. Uh, not for, you know, little Timmy that wants KD's autograph and <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It sucks. I remember when I was a fan going to magic games, if, if, you know, if Kobe wasn't playing and that was the one time he came to Orlando, I was sad. Like I was genuinely sad. I get to see the magic play all the time. I came here to see Kobe and he's not playing. So it, it definitely, I see it both ways, but at the end of the day, these the players are way too important to, you know, please everybody. And, and they're going to need them to keep doing this and have the load management and, and have the doctors kind of strategically sh shut them down. Um, and most likely on road games. I know that's yeah, the I mean, thing. Like, is, there, is there a fix? I mean, can you, can you be forced to sit at home? Like what, what is the fix here? Is there one? It has to be. Well, it's just if you're traveling, you're already a, you know part of it is that you're even more tired, you're more fatigued, mm. you landed late. It's a back to back, so it just kind of makes more sense, like medically, to do it on the road. Oh yeah, I mean, gosh. I think look, I, 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 people were cussing me out the day that the Nets did this and saying, "Hey, um, you know, I spent five hundred dollars or whatever." But yeah, it's your money, but it's also these guys' knees and ankles and hips and and Achilles and. The Nets are, you know, they're weirdly this team of just a bunch of damaged guys in a lot of ways. I mean, it's Seth and Joe both coming off ankle surgeries. Ben had a back surgery. Edmund Sumner is coming off Achilles surgery. Um, at that time, Nick Claxton had a hamstring injury. 
And then obviously Kevin is old. And so they, they had this weird kind of combination of just things going for them. That's like, yo, we do have to get rest for these guys. It's unfortunate, but I mean, I think the fine was 25 K. Uh, oh, please. The Nets probably, you know, sent that in pennies to be petty. I don't know, but <laughs> that, that is, you know, that's like one concession stand for the night. They, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll accept that. I feel like, I mean, maybe you stagger them or maybe it's a mandate. I know that the traveling is part of the, hey, if I could sit. But a lot of times they do travel and they just sit on the bench in the street clothes. Like maybe if it's, you can't sit on the road, you can't, I, 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 it's hard for me to believe that there's not a fix. Like I know you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, but there has to be a way to sort of make it a little bit better. And I'm not saying that's because of Timmy, because, you know, life is hard and it's not unfair. It's <laughs> not a fair thing. And you'll figure that out, kid. But you know, just to avoid having three stars all sitting on a bench. It's just a bad, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Oh, yo, the guys. Nets won. The Nets won. So well, yeah. to the league. You're like, <laughs> would you show yeah. us? We beat we beat them anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. So take your 25K. <laughs> right. That's all I gotta say. Um, oh, we're taking a break. Things got serious. Things are real serious here. Morale is low. <laughs> enough is enough. These parlays, it's time to let the lady fix it all when we come back. Grass isn't always greener, Michelle. <laughs> Santa Barkley is coming to town. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. He's delivering $20 million in gifts this holiday season to all FanDuel customers. It doesn't matter if you've been naughty or nice. St. Chuck has something for everyone. Just check your FanDuel app from today through Christmas Day for no sweat, same game parlays, casino bonuses, and all sorts of stuff that'll fill you with holiday cheer. Look at that smile. Guarantee! Okay. <clears throat> so yesterday we had our four-leg parlay, as we do on this show. And the requirement was a 75% success rate. So three of the four had to hit. Well, two of the four hit. Gentlemen, We're let's so go through what happened last night. <laughs> so, Beetle, so, so, so. Beetle, did you so, make so. a call? Did you make? <laughs> did you make a call to JB to sit Donovan Mitchell? He had eight points in the first three. He sat How crazy down, is that? He sat down the seven minute mark in the third quarter and never came back in the game. He had twenty three points. There's some collusion here. Like, I, if you I wanted know. to be on the segment beads, we could have just put you on. You didn't have to True. cost us money. It's like, true. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I was in playoffs for fantasy football and had Aaron Jones, who who was a couple inches away from getting six points. I was down five, and now I lose. So you know what? Gambling is hard, Eddie. It's a really hard thing to do, which is I why I've Packers decided to do it. Defense. <laughs> I lost to the Packers defense last night. All you the Rams did? had to do was not be bad, and they were well, they're bad because Baker Mayfield. Devin Booker, historically bad. Devin Booker didn't even play last night, and they had 38 points in the first quarter, and I took the under. Like, it just it, it doesn't make sense. It I think we no can sense. all agree that Chandler's the worst, though, right? We agree that Chandler's yeah. the worst one. of. Okay, right, let's we'll just have we'll, that. Okay. We'll see how this goes, Michelle. Let's Send see how it goes. Your beetle. I know, I really <laughs> have. Eddie, what do you have for us for tonight? I have Jordan Poole over 26 points against the Knicks, which means he'll probably score 21 and shoot terrible. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I got. First night of a back-to-back. I got, I got Come JP on. lighting him up. It's the garden. He'll be great. He'll be great. I feel good about that awesome. one, Chandler. Have a, oh, yeah. It's, I like that yeah. one. Yeah. I, Chandler? This, this, is, this is his team right now. This is his show. He's got to get buckets. And you know what I realized, <laughs> Eddie? We're always taking the points, the over on uh, player props. I'm straight up going Suns. Money line at home against the Wizards. And yep. if they do not cover this, I will bow out and give Danny or Jason, whoever else, <laughs> my pick. You're giving because away. No more shooting for the fences. I'm going for the lock. And my boy Polachek just texted me and said, I can't wait. It's parlay time. I'm going like the opposite of all you guys. So <laughs> wait, here you go, Polly. I did I dare you to take Wizards money line, Polly. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm glad someone finally figured out how to do this. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm stepping my foot into the pool gently, as it's my it's my first time. Uh, <sighs> Nick's money line over the Warriors. Um, garden, all eyes on the Garden tonight. No Steph. Um, the Knicks have been doing okay, and and also the Warriors on the road are a, a hot garbage mess. So that's what it's looking like. We're starting little today. Um, Twenty bucks get you about fifty six bucks. That's not bad. Okay, okay, guys. Part of me wants this. the Warriors. Part of me wants the Warriors to win by forty, Michelle. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they will. 
I'm so happy this happened on a Tuesday because when your leg loses it today, oh, we are, we be, get to talk about it tomorrow. You no chance. Our no leg chance. Game tomorrow. There's zero I chance my leg wait. loses, and we will find out tomorrow. <laughs> Until then, death, enjoy the, the games. Happy Tuesday. Get ready for the cold front. It's a coming. We'll see you all in the morning. <laughs>